the barrels on most side-by-side -side shotguns are going to get loose over time with extensive use. This is a condition that we call off the face, where the barrels and the receiver are no longer in contact. Fortunately, there's a pretty straightforward process called rejoining that restores the barrels and the receiver to their original specifications. Jack, I think this gun is probably a project for rejoining. That is, it's loose enough and it's down on the flats that I think we'll probably have to put a new hinge pin in it. Oh, yeah. Why don't you tell us what that's all about and, and let's see what we can do with it. Yeah. What's well, the difference, first of all, between having a tight one and having to rejoin one? Well, the, 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 the difference being that you can't tighten it anymore. You'd be just, if you if you attempted to tighten this gun, you'd be just pulling the flats of the action and the flats of the barrel tighter together and you wouldn't, you could pull out the, or crack the brass that holds the lump in. So you're so smoking the flats of I'm, the barrel. There we go. I don't know what you're going to do on your birthday, man. I, mean, I, I, I couldn't blow out 76 bloody candles. There you go. Okay. So you're going to basically slam it closed. Yes. And have a look now. As you will see, it's only on the, on the face in places. It's yep. right on the corners there. Very little contact. A little bit, little bit on the extractor. Uh-huh. And you see it's on the corner there. It's just about down on the, just about down on the flats. It's hard to see there. You get any transfer in but there? You see it's nearly, it's nearly all completely off the face. I think right this corner, Jack, That's is where right, we're hitting, yeah. which is right there. That's you can right. see the shiny spot yeah. there. I to say it's one of those things. It's, it's so bad and so loose. But I think you know the only way with this one would be. If you tighten this, you'd just be pulling the flats together. You wouldn't be doing much good. Although it's partly on the face, it's just there and just there. But there's no bearing at the top, as you can see. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and there's bearing on the extractor. Well, I think the answer is with this one would be really a re rejoint, which would mean either welding the hook or, or new hinge pin. New hinge pin. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to move by either welding up the hook or putting in a larger hinge pin, we're trying to move the back, barrels back. Backwards, that's correct. Refit the face of the barrels to the that's receiver. Easy. That's correct. And then it should tighten itself right up with that's the bites right. at that time. But the key is is the hook and the cross pin. That's right. By fitting a new, new cross pin, hinge pin, or joint pin, whichever you want to call it, you're bringing the barrels back you're putting the gun back to where it was when it was new, virtually. Mm -hmm. Now, can we get that cross pin down at Walmart, or we got to make one? Well, I wish we could go one down at Walmart or even Kmart, but unfortunately, this case, it's a, it's a driving joint pin. It's driven in there. There's nothing holding it. There's no screws. It was just driven. Just, driven, just driven, friction fits all the way Yeah, just in. driven straight okay. through. Is it a straight it, pin or is it tapered? I think it is just a straight pin. Mm -hmm. uh, but the you see, if it was a screw-in pin, they'd have a screwdriver slot so or a turn a, screw slot uh, across the end of the pin, you see. So pins are put in lots of different ways, but oh, this yeah. one is simply drifted Depends on in. the grade of the gun. It's mm -hmm. a very, it's a cheap old hammer gun. And uh, as I say, it's just a drive-in pin. Had it been a good quality hammer gun, it would have it had a, a, a screw-in joint pin. Mm -hmm. Now, when we knock that pin out, we're going to basically uh, uh, ream that hole out a few yeah. thousands. We're going yeah. to make up a new pin out of drill rod. That's correct. If we, we if we drive this out, then we've got to ream out that joint pin hole. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, probably five, ten thousands, depending. Mm -hmm. I think we could even go away with about seven, five, seven thousand mm -hmm. this one. Drive that out. Turn up a. Uh, ream it out with a with a ream a little mm -hmm. bit bigger, and drive in another pin, let's say five to seven thousand feet bigger, and then well, we would then op open the hook. We'd have to open the hook 
Now, Jack, a lot of people may not be able to see what this is when we call it a pin, but uh, it's, it's obviously a non-integral piece that's been drifted in there. That's right. And then they have engraved around it, so it's actually a hidden pin. It's there. You can that's see right, a round right. part. But we're going to drift it out of there, and it'll be real apparent when we do. So then, then when we've got the new pin in there, we'll find we've got to open up the hook top and bottom, top and, bo top and bottom of the hook, because the pin is bigger than the size of that, that mm -hmm. radius. Right. There, it's bigger than that. Right. And it'll be touching top and bottom, so you have to open top and bottom until you get a good bearing on the middle of the... On the, on the, in, in the hook itself, right at the bottom. Okay. See, so you can't just put the pin in and just and put the ac barrels on the action and say it's done. You've got to fit it. Fit this very, very carefully. That's okay, right. well, well, we'll show that here in a little bit. Yeah. All right. Think we can get this pin out? I don't know. Okay. But Which one of these drifts you want? Okay, now I'm going to drive out this pin from, right, from the right-hand side to the left. You think it's a tapered pin or is it straight? Well, it seems to be straight because it, it's, mo it's moving pretty easy. We'll soon find out. I don't think it's got much taper in it, if any at all. There we go. Okay. And there's the middle so, part, the middle part with the shiny, where it's shiny one of it. Mm -hmm. sure. This is where the hook. Well, the hooks hooks up right here. Tights on it, yes. And we can see that there's a step on this end. That's right. So That's we right. had to drift it out from the right side. That's we couldn't correct. have drifted it out from the you left, so it's a little, little bit larger side. on this end. Uh, it's bears out what I've been telling you, you know, knock out from the right to the left. Right to the left. And in from the left to the right. Every hinge pin is going to be a little bit different. Now let's do this. Let's measure this one. I've got about 355, Jack, on the uh, diameter of it. Mm -hmm. uh, it varies a little bit. So if this is 355, uh, how much you want to ream that hole out to put well, a new I'd, hinge pin uh, in? I'd say with this one, uh, 355 to 362. Okay, now give me a yeah. little bit of a range because I'm going to have to find a reamer. What's the minimum? What's the maximum? Well, the minimum we want is if that's 355, Three minimum would be 360. Okay. And we, you know, as I say, we're not at the 360. We're not giving us much to work with. Right. But uh, as I say, 360, 362 would be better. All right. Uh, 365 is a max. So I want a reamer between 360 and 365, with 362 being uh, the optimum. Uh, that's right. Yeah, okay. Really, yeah. Now we've got a step in here. Are we going to make a? Uh, uh, are we going to? Uh, Obviously, we're going to just ream this part here because this is not going to change. Oh, and that's right. I mean, when we turn the pin, when you turn we've the got pin, 406 yeah. here. That's right. Well, you just leave it to that 406 exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make a new pin. We're making it out of drill rod. That's right. And we need to we need to ream it to go through, which will open up below that step mm -hmm. right through to the other side. Okay. okay. Well, then let's see if we can get a reamer and okay. uh, we'll ream that hole out there. Okay. And we took the hinge pin out of it. Of course, the hinge pin interfaces here with the hook, and these barrels are off the face, so we knew that we had to make a new hinge pin. We've made a new one up. It's about mm -hmm. 5 thousandths right. bigger than this one. And uh, we're going to now need to ream the hole out here mm -hmm. and uh, hammer that hinge pin in, and then refit those barrels. That's right. Think you can do that? Well, I think so. <laughs> Let's give it a try. The uh now with this with this gun, the the only way uh, to to fit a new new joint pin, hinge pin, or whatever you want to call it, is by reaming the hole, mm -hmm. the joint pin hole out. It's only a driving joint pin, so we'll give it a go and see how, what, what we do. Normally, you wouldn't with a with a side modern side lock gun, you wouldn't have to make ream out for a new pin because there's a provision made to fit a new pin. Mm -hmm. Now, let's hold this in the vise. Right. Put 
some cutting oil on the on the primer. We're only taking out about five thousand. Yeah, he's, so. he's, we're only going. To, we we're only going about five thousand bigger because this gun wasn't really, wasn't very far off the face. Um, you know, as you couldn't, you could, you couldn't see much light between the face of the barrels and mm -hmm. the face of the action. So there was no need really uh, to. Uh, no, not, no need really to go any bigger with the new, new hinge, the new joint pin. Yeah, you can see we've just taken out a precious well, little amount of material there. There we are. There we go. It's that's fully. Four, there we go. That's next thing we wipe out all the swarf and cuttings and if I say swarf here nobody knows what I'm on about <laughs> but it's, it's, the, it's these, these chippings are referred to as swarf in the engineering trade. Did you say earlier two uh, nations uh, separated by a common language? Yes well, you could <laughs> I mean that's Churchill's old saying wouldn't yes. it? Now then this should be a drive-in fit now and we'll We're looking just for one or two thousands there of interference right, fit. Yes. It, it's beginning to bite in the hole, so. Yes, it's going in nicely. It's all this in the vise. There's a, there's a collar on there. That collar will, that will go down. That's just about down, Larry. How, how do you know when it's finished, Jack? Well, you can hear. You can. You can hear. <laughs> well, it won't solid. go any farther. Huh? Yeah, that's gone in very well. Okay, now we're leaving both ends sticking well, leave, out. Leave proud both for now. ends sticking out because you can make cut those off and pile them down level with the body mm -hmm. afterwards and engrave them. Now, there's nothing else holding that pin but just friction just fit. Friction. I mean, there's no screws or anything. Now, having got the pin in, the next move is to, is to, I'll fit it to the barrels. Now, having put a new pin in, which is larger than that one, we'll find that the new pin doesn't fit the hook. Mm -hmm. It will be, it will be uh, hard on the ends. It'll, in other words, it'll be bearing on the be top and the bottom. Both edges. But it okay. won't be touching, mm -hmm. it won't go into the, right into the hook. Now, this is, I've got a lot of that, that cutting oil here. Let's get that cutting oil out of the way because it's, I'm going to use some smoke. I've got the little smoke lamp, smoke lamp going and I use a bit of a stick shoved in some kerosene, kerosene to get to light off that. The next move is take the extractor out. We don't want the extractors in. No, we don't want the extractors fitting, so. in because you see, we've got the ca a fixed cam mm -hmm. on this gun, and if we every if the, we can't take the cam out, mm -hmm. so we have to take the extractors out. Because every you, you, every time you open the gun, the, the extractors will, will pop up, mm -hmm. and it'll get get in your way. There we go, and we can screw back in the, put the screw back in, so we won't lose it. Okay, now, you'll see that the, this won't fully close, the, 
the the extension sticking up above the barrels and sticking up above the top of the action. So that's thirty or forty thousandths from bottom, the, the, go, which is what we want. You see now, when when I the next thing is to make sure to see where it's where it's bearing in the hook. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we smoke the hook, smoke the hook. Have we got the fore end of this handy, please? Yes. Put the action on the barrels. Put the fore end on to keep it tight into the knuckle. And then move this action slightly like that open. It's very tight. Mm -hmm. Now, take that off. Take the action off. Examine the hook. And you'll see that I've got two shiny marks there where the the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the black, the smoke black, has been removed by the new pin. I'm going to take out the removed metal at these two points where uh, in the hook, and keep doing that till I get a good bearing inside the hook, and then I will start, finish off the job by taking it, taking metal off the face of the action. So, for this job, you could, you could use a big round file, but if you use a big round file, you can't see what you're doing. So, a little a little a Swiss file will do the trick, do the job, and you can just take out, remove metal where the two high spots are either side. You're and taking off a couple of thousand stack, you think? Probably less, probably no more than that, probably okay. a bit less. I'm just t taking taking it out bit by bit mm -hmm. until I get a an even bearing in the hook. Okay. Because you don't want it just bearing on one little spot. The gun will be loose in five minutes if mm -hmm. you do. And I'll bl smoke, smoke that again. It's completely black inside the hook, if mm -hmm. you can see that. There, it's uh, completely black, covered in smoke. Then, put this the action back on, the fore end on. You must put the fore end on because the fore end keeps the keeps the joint pin, the new pin you put put mm -hmm. it in touch with the hook. Mm -hmm. Open it a little bit. It sees you what it was last mm -hmm. time. I see that. It still doesn't close down. Take that off. Have a look at your. There's a high spot on that side, and a high spot just there. Virtually the same place as we had them before. So I've I've got to take more out. Now it's better to take out too little than too much. I mean, it's no sense in going mad with a file and just hacking away, because if you do that, you'll probably lose lose your bearings you've got. It's got to, the joint pin's got to bear on the, on the, uh, in the hook. Welded the hook because the, it, it's bearing on the outside. This is how they put two runs mm -hmm. of weld in the back of the hook. Right. Yeah. Right. Closing up a bit more. Mm -hmm. Getting closer. Now the it's as you can see it's bearing in the hook, and I think it's it's bearing. You can see white marks all pretty well here and there all over the bottom of the hook. I don't think we're going to get it any better than that. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the next move, I'll po give it a polish with a fine emery cloth, and then we've got final fitting. We take. 
the metal off here and here on the face where it's touching now until it fully closes and we can get the underbolt in. What we're doing is we're trapping the barrel between the hinge pin here that's correct, and the face, the face of the breech. So it right. touches here and it touches back yeah, here and it really correct. doesn't touch anywhere else except the locking that, bolt that, holes are closed. That, that's, that's right. And you see if it was if it was if it was bang if this part was touching in the back of the body there, mm -hmm. it would keep it off the face, you mm -hmm. see. It would be allowed to touch the face. But again, you know, it, it's, it's not an expensive gun. It's a cheap old hammer gun, uh, you know, cheaply made. And of course, you know, near enough is good enough in with these mm -hmm. things, you know. Near enough is good enough. Yeah, that's right, you know. They, well, maybe for your guns, Jack. Well, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't <laughs> much better with the cheap, cheap American ones. But you've got to realize that they, this grade of ammo gun was made in Birmingham mm -hmm. and there was a whole, whole industry churning out this kind of grade of ammo gun at, at the end of the 1800s. But anyway, that's, and it's getting close as you can see now. When I black that down, and we, when it, we'll have a, clear, a good clearance underneath the flats here, mm -hmm. and we can show that later on. Um, when I've got it blacked down. Mm -hmm. Just give it a polish. I think that's smooth enough for this job. It's, it's quite smooth as you can see the... Yeah, that looks very good. Quite smooth and make sure it's clean and the next thing is to you need a little, little, little tiny spot of oil on there you don't want too much just what i'll do is just put that there like that there like that get the end of one of these files and just put a little tiny bit little touch and just put it on the center of the hook there i don't want i don't want too much oil now that'll that'll stop it b binding and and, uh, and gall in the hook with the, with the movement of opening and closing it. Put the forehand on. And you see that makes a lot of difference. That little bit of oil now. The next thing is to what we call black it down as you will see that it's it's there's a shiny mark on the face there and one part a bit further around on that one and i don't don't think that i think that's where i've ducked it with my hand on the doll's head now what we'll do we'll light up this light up this lamp again and uh, do some blacking down with it with it under barrels like this you can take it off and do it, but this saves time. <laughs> then close it. You can bend the strap, but be careful because you can break the strap if they're hard, especially a thin one. Then open it. As you can see, we've got a bear in there and the bear in there. There is none on the doll's head. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit. There's a bearing there and a bearing on the other side. There's no bearing on the doll's head, so we don't have to worry about that. And there's a little bit up here somewhere in the corner. And Jack, it's important to note that the barrel is not down on the flats, that there's space between the bottom of the barrel and the top of the action, which is what you want to happen. I need, I do need a clearance between the flats here uh, from about halfway along the action to the corner. Mm -hmm. but. As long as I've got one clearance there, I'm not going to worry about it whether sure. how much it is. Not with a gun of this quality. I mean, he, as I say, the main thing is it getting it having it on the face. And so, with this thing, I mean, it's, it's not a. If it was a Holland and Holland, I, I'd say I'd, I'd be concerned if I had a big gap there or mm -hmm. something. You see, and. But, and then you, what you do is you, 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 it's easy, 
you can take it, take the barrels off. Now, what I'm going to do is just with a with smooth file, I'm going to take take remove metal from where it's where it's bearing. You know, as there's shiny marks. You just take a little bit off. Uh, now, smoke it again. Barrels on. Pour in down. And now you'll see that we've got what we've got. We've got a little bit more bearing on this side. We've got more bearing and it's coming towards the top part now. Yeah, up here. No, there's nothing there. I took okay. what was there. There's a little bit. There's a little bit there, you see, which is it's all part of this one bearing. So really, to, but I've got to keep taking it off this side until this side also comes all the way around. So in actual fact, I'm going to take it off. They're just there, there all the way where it's bearing there until I get this bearing coming around here as well, fairly even. We've, all, we've, all, we've almost got this finished, Larry. Uh, not very far to go. In fact, I don't think we'll get any, with, with this gun, we'll get any better fit than we've got. Well, that's it, thank you. I'm getting another one over there too, that's the right. last one, I guess. Uh, right, we'll give, give this, give this up. Now, I've put, I've put the underbolt in and the lever, the rest of the lever work into this now, at this stage. Um, Oh, by that way, I can see if I've got any bite on the on the bolt. Now, put the fore end on. And it blows. The lever goes over. Closes nicely. It's on the face. It's back to where it was originally when the gun was made. Now. As you can see, we've got we've got a good bearing on the face, pretty well all the way around, and here as well. We haven't got it's not touching on the flats here, mm -hmm. which is good. That's how it should be. As you can see, we've got a bearing all the way around, a little white mark all the way around, which is pretty good for an old gun like this. Now. What I'm going to do is clean it up, get rid of, get rid of that smoke. Just get rid of all the smoke. I've used a smooth file on it, so just run over it with a smooth file. It's pretty smooth now. With uh, get some fine emery and polish it a bit, polish it a bit. And we're not removing any metal now, no, we're, we're just, just polishing it up just, just a little bit. That's right. We're just polishing now, we can't. If we took any metal off, we'd be off the face again. Clean up the around the doll's head. Excuse me, I okay now. You can if you want. Might put might put some fancy uh, fancy work on that, some striping if you want. Uh, but really, there's no need. 
And at this stage of the game, you can you can polish up areas like the with a bit of emery cloth, polish up the back of the lump. Polish up areas like that. And any places where you fold any metal off, just finish them off. And excuse me. Mm -hmm. The uh, you can polish the sides of the the lump. And you're going up and down, which oh, is oh, the, yes, the oh, direction that the barrels yes. move. That's right. And uh, although there's a lot of marks in going the other way, you can't possibly take all the marks out. Mm -hmm. You're just cleaning it up a little just, bit. Just cleaning it up, making it look respectable. The barrels need what cleaning out. There's mm -hmm. smoke in the chambers, but again. There we go with that. And then the next thing is to try the extractor in there. The, I've got the little little stop screw in there, or stop pin for it. Let's take that out. And at this stage of the game, you can check whether it's not sticking up above the barrels, and that's not sticking up. There's a clearance between it. Mm -hmm. It's not sticking, so that's not good. That's not going to hold the hold the gun open. And uh, before we put that in, finally, we'll clean clean it. Up. We'll just clean the face of the barrels up, so we might as well clean the face of this up. Look hard if you don't. Let's see and if it goes back together, okay, Jack? That's right. You know, close it up. There you go, Larry. It's back on the face. Shootable condition now. Now, Jack, I can see just a hint of light uh, between the barrels and the and the flats of the receiver. Absolutely nothing between the barrels and the and the standing breech. I'd say that's a, a pretty good job of fitting those that's barrels. Right. Yeah, yeah for, now, a, for an old gun, it's not bad. For an old gun, it's, it's not bad. bad. Are we ready to uh, file off the ends of these uh, of the hinge pin here? Yes, we're ready to do that. Larry, ready for to get in, the ends engraved again. Okay, so we'll file them off, clean them up, and well, very we, carefully, uh, and then so, we'll engrave so, so Axle and saw them off and get them level, polish them off without hitting the side of the body too much. Mm -hmm. It's very, it means careful use of a file to do that, but I think we can do it, Larry. Uh, let me let me get let me get an axle first because I'm not going to file all that lot. Mm -hmm. So we'll cut this one, this one, and file. Yeah, saw them yes. off. Okay. Yeah. That's one there. your breath? No. No? <laughs> I've been worse than that. That's a, that's a blood line. 
But I will say this is a good axle. It's been a good axle blade. It's, a, it's an English one. It's an Eclipse. Uh -huh. Used to be a good brand of tools, Eclipse used to be. A 12 inch, three square bastard cut file because it's not, you've got to remove a lot of metal mm -hmm. and you don't want to be sitting all day here doing it. So mm -hmm. you use a file which will remove the metal quickly. Now you've got to use some control. You don't want the file. Gotcha. Now you can lay your file down. And there you go. Now you can finish it up here. Just finishing off this hinge pin, ends of the hinge pin, having cut them down. And there we are. That's about, that's about it. Ready for, polished off, ready for engraving, finishing off. We can put a bit of instant blue on it, to, but now to, so it looks a lot better, looks better. So that looks pretty good, Jack. We've polished up a little bit on the outside of the uh, receiver, but that's all very can't, hard. So, can't avoid it. Mm -hmm. so nice, smooth fit there. Very good. Okay. Think I'll be able to put it back together? I think so. You should have all the experience you've had watching me. You've <laughs> got firing pins hitting. No, no, I should push back in. Well, Jack, that's just a very, very good job. Well, thank you. Thank you. And folks, that's just one of the ways of rejoining the barrels and the receiver on a tired old double barrel shotgun.